Hey friends and neighbors, old Doc here. Some of you uh, may be wondering where I've been lately. And uh, I tell you, uh, some of you know I've had some health problems here the last year, year and a half, and and uh, hopefully this is the uh, answer to it, or some of them anyway, hopefully. Uh, here, uh, a little over a week ago, I got up and in uh, early in the morning, five o'clock, like we always do here, and uh, it was your, you know, typical morning. Wake up. I've had back issues for many years, and uh, this morning it was it was no different. Get up in the morning and. Same back problems, you know, muddle through the day as best you can with it. And uh, hopefully the sun isn't causing too much of an issue here. Anyway, get up, go through the routine, eat a piece of uh, peanut butter toast for breakfast, and get my bottle of water for the morning, and get ready for the day, call in, get ready, you know, see if there's any loads to haul. And uh, Penny, she got ready for work, she took off. And uh, I was just kind of waiting around for the phone to ring, see if there's any trucking to be done. And uh, as the morning went on, the back pain got worse and it had spread, it didn't move, it spread around my side, into my abdomen, and down into my groin. And uh, by 10 o'clock that morning, I couldn't sit down, I couldn't lay down, it was painful to walk, it didn't make any difference what you did. It was, I was having a lot of pain. So I was just drinking water I continued to drink water. By 10.30 that morning, I couldn't keep water down. I, there was so much pain. I've, I've been, I've had my skull busted, a lot of broken bones, had uh, surgery on my spine, a lot of different things. I've, I've never had pain like this in my life. And I hope to never have it again didn't know what it was I mean it was like uh, like my groin was in a vice and it was it was so painful that there was many times I thought I was gonna pass out and I kind of I wish I would have that's how bad it hurt because I knew if I pass out I'm gonna have some relief I continued to try to drink some water because you know, my stomach was empty at this point. I only had one piece of peanut butter toast for breakfast and I couldn't keep water down. Uh, it would just be a couple of minutes after I drink water and I'd vomit back up again. It would, it, and it was just because of the pain. It was so bad. I went through the whole day like this. I thought, well, when Penny gets home, I'm gonna have her take me up to the ER, and uh, because there was no way I was gonna, I could, I couldn't drove, I couldn't have gotten a pickup, and drove myself anywhere, and I wasn't gonna call an ambulance, you know, and have that. I don't know what it cost for an ambulance ride. Anyway, I wait till Penny gets home that evening. She came in the house. I told her, I said, you got to take me to the ER. I said, something is bad wrong. Now, I've had this pain in my back and down in my groin off and on for a year and a half. And there's there's days where it just, it wasn't as bad as it was this time. But it would come and go and sometimes lay you up for a day or two. So, we get up to the ER just before five o'clock 
and get checked in, which, you know, doesn't take long. They just give you a little card and uh, pretty much your address, who you are, you know, where you live. That's pretty much it. There was a handful of people there. No big deal. Didn't think it was going to be very long. Well, shortly after we get checked in, there's some little teenage chicky do in there that decided she was going to throw some kind of a tantrum. I don't know what her issue was. She didn't appear to be hurt other than a screw loose. Well, her little tantrum shut the ER down. So they have hospital security there and they're trying to talk to her, get her calmed down, and she's just having a meltdown. I, you know, I don't know what the deal is, if she lost her little pony or whatever. Well, hospital security, and she, they couldn't get her to calm down, so they ended up with the police down there. And they were doing nothing, you know. I mean, so, Two hours of this bullshit of her having her meltdown, they finally get things going again. I mean, there's people coming in, you know, sicker than hell, what have you, in pain, and she's holding everything up for her little mental breakdown. Anyway, they, they finally, you know, get things moving again get me back in a room, told them what the deal was, and uh, it was like, almost like immediately they knew what the problem was. They stuck an IV in my back of my hand because I told them, you know, I, I haven't been able to keep water down or anything all day, you know, and uh, I was really dehydrated. Penny had to stop the car, you know, and uh, pull off the main drag on the way to the hospital so I could vomit. That's, you know, it was just, Shadow, quit. Leave it. Shadow's rubbing on the, come on, get your ass out of there. So, they stick an IV in the back of my hand and uh, give me a shot of morphine and a shot of some other stuff. And I'll explain this here in a minute but it was like they knew right off what the issue was which you know I'm happy they did and uh, in between each little visit with the nurse or whatever she would leave the room it would be at least 20 to 40 minutes before anybody came back in the room and, you know and I, I think there was like three, maybe four of these nurses. Never seen a doctor. You know, they'd do something, then they'd go back and report to whoever was on call or whatever. And then they'd come back, you know, with this and that. Well, they ended up, they took a couple of quick CAT scans. I only took a few minutes. And uh, took a couple x-rays. Only took a couple minutes. But, you know, time is passing in between and come to find out I had three large kidney stones that had broke loose and they were trapped um, like this is your kidney there's a tube I think it's called the uter or something like that that tube goes from your kidney down to your bladder well these three large kidney stones were trapped right at that tube. Well, the second injection that they gave me, I, I can't tell you what it was called, but it is to expand or relax that tube that goes from your kidney down to your bladder and uh, in hopes of passing these kidney stones that had come loose. And uh, but by the 
x-rays and the CAT scans. The uh, urologist that I talked to a few days later, he told me, he said, "There's you're not going to pass these. He said, there, it's, it's not going to happen. He said, even to be honest with you, you know, he said the most people that have kidney stones and we have to go out, they go up there with a camera and a little grabber thing, grab the kidney. He said, they're not coming out that way either. He said, uh, the only option really that we have is, um, I'm going to try to say this correctly. If I don't, you know, don't leave some stupid comment. Uh, Liptotripsy, I believe it's called. And uh, so that's what I had done. And what this does, it's almost like a uh, x-ray machine where there's a, you know, the you're laying in here, but there's a top and a bottom to it. And it moves, this machine moves around you, or it can move. They lay you on the table and uh, it gives the doctor a live picture so if the stones move as they're giving you this treatment, what it is is a shock wave treatment. It shoots shock waves through your body and in hopes of breaking these stones up. Then you can pass them down through that uh, two millimeter tube that goes from your kidney down to your bladder. That tube is only two millimeters. So Two millimeters doesn't sound very big but if you have kidney stones that are much larger than two millimeters trust me you'll feel it and you'll realize how small two millimeters are so I get in there uh, Monday Penny took me out uh, they put me under anesthesia. I've seen videos. I've done a lot of research on kidney stones since I got back from the ER. Um, some places they just give you something to relax you. I don't know, you know, maybe those people don't have very big kidney stones. They can only shock you so many times with this uh, machine. They call it shocking you, but it's a shock wave. It's not... Shadow, stop it. Um, and they can only do it, I think, 2,500 or 3,000 times. And each time that shot, they can only hit you, you know, with the shock wave so many times because it's shocking through your organs, right? To break up these stones. So, uh, they, they put me under. Sometimes they run a, uh, a stent up through your bladder and up to your kidney to help these uh, stones pass once they get broken up. Luckily, I didn't, they didn't think it was necessary, so I'm fortunate that way. I don't have to go back and have a stent pulled out because the stent causes issues, you know, uh, passing blood near urine and stuff until this stink comes out. These stones, they're rough. And uh, I know that for a fact because I had this, these three stones broke up uh, Monday morning. Yesterday morning, I started passing a few stones, bits and pieces. Uh, two of the bigger ones were the size of peppercorns, and they're rough. And, uh, oh, a little stab in the back pain there. Um, on down to, like, pepper flakes. So, I finally started passing these stones. And uh, these peppercorn-sized ones, it didn't hurt, per se, to pass them. It, um, uncomfortable? Yes, it, it, it was uncomfortable, but it wasn't painful. Um... You go to urinate, you know, and everything's going fine, and then you, it, it just suddenly stops. And you're like, well, I know I'm not done, you know. And then you start again, and then it stops, and then you start again. Well, then pretty soon 
plank, plank, you know, out comes these stones. The smaller ones, you don't, uh, you don't even realize, or I didn't realize that they were even coming out. You know, the ones that are like pepper flakes. What they want you to do, get your little screen if they don't supply you one, you know, the urologist or whoever, your doctor, whoever's treating you, they, if they don't supply you one, you get, uh, go to Dollar General and get a uh, little strainer, you know, like that sets over your teacup or your coffee cup or whatever. They want you to pee through that, trap these stones, and then take them back to your urologist so they can analyze them, whatever. But uh, kidney stones in my family, you know, as far as I know, I've talked to my dad. He's never had issues with them, or if he did, he never said anything. And uh, when I was telling him what we went through the other day, why he never said he's had issues with them. But uh, so that's where I've been. And trust me, it is extremely painful. I've watched videos on YouTube, read a lot of different things on treatments, what have you, what you're, what's going to go through. If they would have told me, okay, here's what's going to happen Thursday, but we can do this for you today to save you from going through this Thursday, I would have jumped on, let's get it, let's, I mean, that's how painful it was. Going through this uh, lithotripsy, having these stones broke up, it wasn't as bad as going to the dentist and having a tooth pulled. So if you have, you know, kidney stones, or if you get this back pain and it spreads around your side, into your belly, and down into your groin, like I said, they knew at the ER, you know, right off the bat what, what the issue was. Or it seemed they did. So, but I would not hesitate to go and, and have this uh, uh, treatment done again. Just knowing the pain and stuff that I went through. And I'm still having a little issue. I didn't sleep all the first night after having the, uh, the treatment done. I did have a sore throat you know, clear down here, and it wasn't from being intubated or anything. All they they just had an oxygen mask on me. But what it was from is that those shock waves going through you. I guess you know, it just shock you know hits your innards hard enough to uh, it, that it gave me this uh, sore throat. The sore throat. This is Wednesday now. This happened Monday morning. When I had the uh, the treatment of lithotripsy, things are going better. Peeing rocks, feeling better. Still have a little back pain, you know, down low in my back, but uh, things are looking up. That's where I've been. If you have this, do not hesitate. They told me, well, we can wait, you know. If you want to wait a week or two and see if you pass them, but you're not going to. But if you went through the pain that I went through, you're not going to wait either. I guarantee it. Because I've, like I said, I've been in wrecks. I've been run over by horses, livestock, broken bones. It'd be easier to name bones that I haven't had busted. And I've never, I, the spinal surgery I had. It hurt for a long time, but it wasn't it wasn't hurt like this. This it was painful. So if you go through the same type of pain, lower back spreads around your side into your belly, down into your groin, and uh, luckily I didn't have any fever or anything like that. So you know. Uh, Go and get it checked out, and uh, don't be afraid of having this treatment done. Because believe me, if you go through that pain, the uh, the cure 
is a lot, lot easier than, than having an hour's worth of that pain. An hour's worth. So, that's where I've been. I've been trying to keep up on everybody's videos. Um, I'm not allowed to drive for a few days. So, because the anesthesia or whatever still kind of got me off my pins. You have to be careful standing up. Even when I go to turn around, uh, I get really dizzy and about keel over. I'm pouring down as much water as I can, not as much as they recommend. I mean, even on a hot day when I'm working and sweaty, I can't drink that much water, but I'm doing what I can to get shed of these rocks. So, that's where I've been. Hope you're all having a great day. Still isn't raining. Send rain if you got any extra. We would really appreciate it. <clears throat> have a great day. Be kind to each other. I still have other videos I want to do and get out. I still have a couple of uh, my poem videos. If you like my poems, I still have a couple of those. My better, one, my best ones that, to me anyway. Uh, I still want to get them done before this fall and get them out. So, and other things, you know, back to working on uh, the tractors and what have you. Matthew, he's done with his uh, apprenticeship for the summer. He just went back to school and uh, started classes again Monday. So he's back in Norfolk, him and um, some of his classmates and friends, they uh, rented a house. So hopefully it's not an animal house type deal. Um, so anyway, that's where we're at. Have a great day. Be kind to each other. Do something nice for a friend, a neighbor, a loved one, or a stranger. Take care of yourselves. And check out. You would be surprised that the foods that are healthy for you cause kidney stones. It, it's insane. You know, you think these foods are healthy. They've been telling you they're healthy for years. Well, your normal everyday foods that everybody eats creates kidney stones. And a lot of videos that I watch, women, it doesn't seem like they're as susceptible to kidney stones as men. I don't know why. A lot of the women videos that I watch, they said it, it was worse than giving child a birth, having childbirth. They said it was it was worse than having a baby. And uh, I don't know about that. You know, I know Penny, she had, she had troubles, you know, with Matthew when he was born, as far as pain goes, okay? So, I'm gonna leave it here. Got any questions? Do not be afraid to post them in the comments and I'll do the best I can to answer them and uh, I got to do a follow-up I'm not sure when with the urologist if there's any questions that I can't answer or I don't know uh, I'll be sure to ask him and I'll get back to you like I said be kind to each other do something kind for a friend family stranger loved one have a great day